Hi, I'm Roland Mesaros, designer with about 10 plus years of experience in design in the traditional 2D sense and about three years of experience with AR, V, I mean spatial computing. <laughs> I really believe that this is the future, but in this video I don't want to talk about spatial computing, the philosophy behind it and why it's just pure awesome. I just wanted to create a series of videos deep diving into AR, VR, interfaces, operating systems from a perspective of a designer to explain some behaviors and hopefully give some ideas about how to improve your application or how to improve an operating system. So as the title says, there are a few missing pieces that makes the current spatial computing a bit cumbersome to use. But in this video, I'm only going to focus on one of these missing pieces. Okay, let's get started in today's topic. Anchoring. Anchoring basically means to anchor something to something else so that they are moving together, they are linked, they are connected. In spatial computing, it's responsible for where are your apps or windows and how they behave when you move or you move them or you move around in your space. So I have a browser window here. If I move, it stays there simple. The window is anchored to my space. Uh, that's one example, anchor to space or spatial anchoring. I believe altogether there are six type of anchorings. Anchor to eye, anchor to head, anchor to space, anchor to body, anchor to body part and anchor to object. So I would like to show and explain each one of them and in the end show you which one is missing from Meta and Apple's spatial operating system. So let's get started. The first one, anchor to eye. Very simple concept. Wherever I look, the interface follows my eye. It's intuitive, easy to use, but requires focus. It's good to know that people sometimes skimp information. They are just scanning things and they are not usually concentrating on exactly the thing they are trying to interact with. So it's an interesting thing to track. It's very precise, uh, very useful, but it has its downsides. Being one of the downsides is it requires an eye tracker or an eye tracking camera, which has to be very precise. Otherwise, it doesn't really make sense to use this technology. And also eye tracking inside a device can be more pricey. This anchoring technique is currently used by Apple in their Vision Pro headset and it is responsible for selection and navigating the UI. And for that, it's a really good use case. However, I would not recommend this anchoring technique to any other UI element. For example, a dialogue window where you have to do something with the item in front of you. If it's tracking your eye movement, its center is always in the center of where are you looking. So if there is a button in the bottom right hand corner of the modal window and you try to look at it, the whole window would move because of your eye movement. So generally it should be only used for pointer and selection. It's not really a great idea to base your whole UI on eye tracking. Anchoring number two anchor to head. Here the UI follows your head. So whatever you are facing, if you just move your head without your body, the UI would follow your head and your eyes are free to move anywhere as long as you don't move your head. I wouldn't recommend this one and it is especially forbidden by Apple as it can get very annoying and very confusing for the user. A head movement is such a slight movement that making your UI elements spazzing around as you are looking with your head and not just your eye. It can be very annoying. Basically, the UI doesn't allow the user to leave the experience or to do not care about a certain window or to look elsewhere. Meta, however, uses a 
bit of a different type of anchoring to this. You can actually see it while you are creating your boundary. Basically, you can see that as you turn, the window is moving with your head movement. It's always allowing a little bit of leeway while moving, so it's not spazzing around, it's not very sensitive. And it also allows you to look up or down without actually bringing the dialogue up and down with your head movement so it's always at eye level this is pretty neat makes me never miss an important dialogue window but it's still annoying as i just cannot escape the window to look at something else or to do something else as maybe that dialogue window is not a priority for me at that moment so I can see why Apple doesn't use this anchoring type. The user should deal with an important dialog window whenever they want to. Number three, and the most common way of anchoring is anchor to space or spatial anchoring. This was the example I showed you earlier when I explained anchoring. It is very much used by Meta and Apple. And for obvious reasons, it mimics the real world. This is how you already use a lot of your objects. You have a monitor on your desk, you have a TV in your living room, and it kind of stays there. In spatial anchoring, things anchor to your space and they stay there. It is used most of the time because it doesn't cause motion sickness. It's very safe, it's steady, their behavior is expected, you know where they are, you know how to get around your objects. So it is mostly used by Apple and Meta. Fun fact, this is the first type of anchoring what is based on your space and not on your body. All right, next one, number four, anchor to body part. Or you could say anchor to specific point on the body. I've seen this mostly in VR games, but also Meta uses it for their shortcuts with your hands or shortcut menus. So the idea at Meta's uh, Quest 3, for example, is that you are pointing at certain things to interact with them, but you still need some toolbars at hand, which are always available because you point to interact, but you look at your hands to activate a menu. And then with a the long press, you can select from certain actions like recentering the view and recording a video. It's not following my head nor my space. It's not anchored in any of these. It's always anchored at my hands. The next one is a pretty cool one. Number five, anchor to objects. This one is pretty useful, but it is not yet used as much. This kind of anchoring is the closest to an AR behavior instead of a VR experience, as it uses your already existing real objects, augmenting them with more virtual skills. As the name says, the UI elements are anchored to physical objects. I'm not sure if there is an example in Meta's operating system, but I found a few examples, a few interesting examples at Apple's Vision OS, which are, for example, a floating connect button to start an external display mode and some helpful autocorrect information and dictation added to Apple's Magic Keyboard. Side note, this is not really about a missing feature, it's more so a request to Apple, if they are watching. But as far as I could see, when the user initiates an external monitor mode for their Mac, it automatically chooses spatial anchoring instead of anchoring it to an object, to the Mac. Spatial anchoring is also a valid and logical choice here because it behaves like an external monitor that you can put anywhere in your desk, but Macs are also pretty mobile. You're moving around with it. So I think it would make sense to, by default, anchor the external display to your Mac, and then you could choose its size while you could still take your Mac, move around in your home, and you would have your display with you always, wherever you go. And to be honest, this anchoring method should be used when you are using both the Mac's external display 
and then you open a Vision Pro app, the Vision Pro app should probably anchor to your Max screen. So when you would move around or go to your couch, your external display and the Vision Pro applications you opened to multitask would follow you. Okay, one more to go. Thank you for sticking around this long. If you have, if you are still there or skipping to this part, so far we got the basics, anchoring techniques currently used by Meta and Apple, but one is missing, anchor to body or anchor to personal space. I kind of get why this is missing, but I also don't. More on this later. I'm not sure why there is no option for this in Meta or Apple's spatial operating systems, but body anchoring is just as natural as space anchoring. You probably did some body anchoring today. If you grabbed your phone and moved with it to a new space while holding your device in your hand, because of smartphones and smart devices, this is the most natural way of anchoring our objects. To stay with us with quick interactions, even if we are not looking at them all the time. You see, when you place your laptop or TV somewhere in your space and it remains there, that's pretty useful. But you also probably do some light movement around your home. You grab a glass of water while you are listening to music or go to the kitchen to do the dishes while you're watching a podcast. Small interactions at home. You aren't just bounded to your couch and you shouldn't be. So what should you do with the current spatial operating systems? If you move around your home, grab and hold your invisible apps and windows and take it with you or just walk to your destination and recenter all your apps and windows or just walk to the kitchen, open some apps you want to use in the kitchen and then leave them there or just have a separate safari window in the kitchen and in your living room and all of your places that you visit sometime and just leave windows and applications all around your personal space. I really don't think that any of these options are comfortable and it would make organizing your windows into a nightmare. Body anchoring basically means that your application or window is not anchored to your face or your head movement or your spatial surroundings. It's anchored to my body at the height of my choosing. Let me demonstrate what I mean in VR. At the moment, I have to hold my window while I move, which is very distracting and not really better than holding a phone or a tablet. I, and probably a lot of Vision Pro customers or Quest Free customers, will be missing this type of anchoring the most. As it mimics our natural behavior with our devices, where we casually consume content or music, walk to a different location, while sometimes peeking at the content. Maybe you want to ask, but you can already grab your virtual window and take them with yourself. What's the problem? It's not levitating next to you, but you can do it. You can bring your window with yourself. The problem is that many users don't like to bring an invisible application with them. They have to bring them in order to continue watching their content. This is what I already do with my physical devices. I have a holder for my iPad and I just bring it with myself every room in my home. And I hate doing it. It's heavy. I'm afraid to drop it, afraid to put it down on certain surfaces, or I just don't have any room for it. And this is exactly where spatial devices have their upper hand. This exact use case is what body anchoring solves. You basically have a weightless, levitating device following you around wherever you go. Also, it frees up both of your hands, which is much safer and useful when you are just casually walking around with one hand. Okay, let's say I convinced you 
It's a useful anchoring type for certain situations, but it begs the question, how would the OS know if you want to use spatial anchoring or body anchoring? How does it distinguish between them? I believe this could be solved simply by proximity. You would basically have a personal space at a certain distance and if you have an application or a big window outside of it, far away from you, that would stay spatially anchored as probably it would be very uncomfortable to walk around like that with a giant screen always in front of you and it would be probably very dangerous but also if something is far away or you are immersed in an experience you are probably using the whole space to have that experience so moving it around would not make too much sense. You probably want to move inside of that experience while it's spatially anchored. But if you would move something close to you inside of your personal space, it should be anchored to your body as it's smaller, more compact, and you probably want to use it more or just peek at it at certain times. Or it's just plain handy having it around yourself while walking around, doing some menial tasks at your home while still being present in your environment. And these are just some very basic ideas. Body anchoring would allow a lot more use cases while allowing a more casual, ambient computing experience. And to circle back, it is a type of anchoring not yet present in any of the operating systems and I really believe that it's missing. I was keeping an eye on mixed reality operating systems to see their evolution or what features do they have, but this missing anchoring type just became more prominent with the release of the Vision Pro. I just had to make this video partly to educate some future developers who are interested in these anchoring types and when to use them, partly as a request. Also, I really hope that we could make this new experience a little bit of a less seated experience right in the beginning and make spatial computing a more free, fun and ambient way of computing. So thank you for watching.